and uh, she's been with the city now for quite a while, at least longer than I have. So I'm going to consider it quite a while. And for seven uh, years now. Seven years. Oh my gosh, Laura, that is quite a while. And she's very uh, capable, and she is excited about being able to share some information on. Um, mechanical permitting and how it all works. And so I'll turn it over to Laura. Thank you, Laura. Yes, thank you, Anna. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to our first summer series 2021 mechanical presentation. So the topics for this presentation is a mechanical inspector the scope of work, the mechanical work exempt from permit, mechanical online permits, interactive permit guide, common common student plan review, requesting inspection online, how to do it, and inspection route, how to access to the inspection route, and common comments during inspections. So as you see in the photo, we have a new Florida building code. It's a Florida building code, seven edition to 2020. So mechanical inspector scope of work. The mechanical inspector will act, are expected to inspect use, using visual observation to ensure that the new mechanical installations and alteration of mechanical systems in public and private buildings follow established codes, laws, and regulations. Example of mechanical inspector scope of work includes uh, air conditioning systems, dog work, exhaust ventilation, kitchen hood, cooling tower, chillers, boilers. And in the picture, we can see an example of a single family home, the HVAC system, the air conditioning on the basement, supplying air and returning air to the space for the first floor. And the same example of a space and air conditioning supply air to the second floor and return air. For example, on the following picture of the water pool shielder, the photo below, I don't know if you can see the mouse moving, I'll go lower them, is an example of the dog work for a, a commercial installation, supply dots into the space. And the photo on the left is an example of the kitchen hood installed in a single family home. So uh, as per Florida Building Code Chapter 1, we have a mechanical work exempt, exempt from permits. And I'm going to read them and I will talk more about it. We have uh, portable heating appliances, portable ventilation equipment, portable cooling units. And we see on the photo on the right an example of a portable cooling unit exhausting at the dot, exhausting to, to the outside. We have steam, hot or chill water piping within any heating or cooling equipment regulated by this code. Replacement of any part that does not alter its approval or make it unsafe. We have an example in this photo. It's an example of air conditioning indoor units and or outdoor units. If, for example, the contractors need to replace just the blower and the indoor unit, of the compression in the in the in the outdoor units for that uh, uh, repair does not need a permit, but it, uh, the job must be conducted by a licensed contractor. Also, many the people, the many people are in it. I think it's because everyone wants the credit, the training credit. Mm -hmm. So, um, portable yeah. evaporated cooler. And as for example, we have a um, refrigerant case that we commonly see um, at grocery stores, at Publix, uh, Windixes. And we have a self-contained refrigeration system containing 10 pounds or less of refrigerants and actuated by a motor of one horse power or less. And we have the installation, replacement, removal, or metering of any load management control device. And as an example, we have a thermostat here in the corner picture uh, that does, does not need uh, payment for that replacement. As I say, all this mechanical work is exempt from payment, but it must be done by a license controller. We have these uh, questions very often, and I wanted to show some examples. The what, for example, do I need a mechanical permit to 
replace only the condensing units in my house? This is an example of the condensing units, and the answer is yes. Do you need a permit? And that is why we need to verify that the new replaced condensing unit matches with the existing interior unit. We also verify that the condensing unit uh, tie downs are installed at per, at per manufacturer, and also the condensing unit must be ele elevated above, minimum above the base floor elevation for the exact replacement. For example, another question. Do I need a permit to install a bathroom exhaust fan? We have in these pictures on the right an example of the exhaust fan in a bathroom. The answer is yes. We do need to verify that the dot exhaust terminates according to the Florida Building Code Mechanica. The, the, the term terminates to do I need a payment to install a window or wall AC unit? Yes. We need to verify that the unit is properly secure as per, as per manufacturer and in compliance with the code requirements. Also, uh, even in Florida, the code requires that uh, every new AC installation must comply, must have heater, even, even, even if we are living in Miami, in Florida. So we need to verify that. We also will need to verify that the condensate disposal is terminated in, in, in approved method after Florida Building Code. So for all this, the answer is yes, you do need a mechanical permit. Uh, for example, for the replacement of a residential recirculated hood, do I need a permit? The answer is no. And we see in this picture on the right, an example of a kitchen hood in a residential property. And the air in this case is not vented to the outdoor. It looks like it in the picture, but it's not. Uh, the air coming uh, through the exhaust uh, hood is re recirculated into the, the, the same space. It's not vented to the outdoor. In that case, you do not need a mechanical panel. Another example for the replacement of residential vanless dryer. We have an example here for residential bandless drive. If it's bandless means that it's not exhausted to the outdoor, there is no need for mechanical payment. Keep in mind, it's only you do not need mechanical payment, but you will need a payment for uh, plumbing and for uh, electric and building. So let's continue. For the replacement of a previously permitting window AC unit, do I need a permit? No but only it was previously approved and it was previously permitted. So I want to talk a little bit about mechanical online permits. This is our website, uh, the Miami Beach website. It's uh, www.miamibeachfl.gov slash city hall building. So to apply for the mechanical permit online, you must click on online permit resource center. So on the picture on the right, when you go to, to city hall, building, announcement, right below the announce, announcement, you scroll down to the end of the page and you will see top links. This top links is very helpful when you are looking for in, information on how to apply for a permit and what do you need for those permits. So when you go to top links, you uh, uh, click on apply online, which is the second one, and you will have a new window. Showing a new window, you just go to online permit, apply here. This uh, blue button, apply here. You will see a new window coming up, popping up with all the different permit types. We have a VOA permit, we have commercial building, including condos for AC exaction shop. We have a residential permit type for single family homes, also for AC unit change shop. You may also apply for a, for a general revisions for sub permit. Keep in mind when you apply for an AC unit change shop, you must upload a signed and notarized permit application, including a cost affidavit AC unit change out form 
and AHRI for that unit you are you are replacing. I will also want to talk a bit about the interacting perfect guide. This is a very uh, useful uh, guide that we have in our website. It's a very he a helpful tool to help to assist you and there are all the information you need you, you need to provide when you apply for a permit online. So one more time you go to the top links and you go to the first one interactive permit guide. You have seen a new window for single family residents, uh, for multifamily, for, for commercial and also for exteriors. If you click on single family residence you will see this example of an interactive permit guide and you will find helpful information related for uh, for the bathroom fixtures, for flooring, for a kitchen a sink, for cabinets, lighting, showers and top, um, among other information. If you click on multifamily interior, you will see the first one shown here in the photo below is for a mini split AC unit. Apply for any type of AC unit. You click on additional information and you will see this new window with the requirements for, for, for plan review and inspections. For a, a brand, brand new AC unit installation or for an AC unit change out. The major difference is for the for a one brand new AC unit installation, you must submit plans for, for review and approval. And for an AC unit change out, we will talk about it later in a follow-up and follow slide. So uh, when you apply for a permit online um, in, and you submit plans for for review, um, I wanted to compile a list of the most common comments that we found during during plan review, and that's why we failed these reviews. So the first one, a more uh, most typical, is the current code edition, the level of alteration, detailed scope of work, and general notes. As I mentioned at the beginning, we have a new uh, code edition, which is a Florida Building Code 2027. Seven edition. The level of alt alteration make sure that you specify its level one, level two, or three, according to to the scope of work. And please uh, include also detailed scope of work. Sometimes we see the plans with the information on architectural pages with the uh, with the scope of work, but when we go to to mechanical sheets, the scope of work is not clear or it's not it's not showing. And also general note for the for the mechanical work that you are um, you are doing at that time. Uh, another uh, common comments during plan review is the valid architect engineer digital signature. As we all know, most of the permit or all the permits are now must be submitted on, online, and the valid uh, signature for the for the um, design professional must be on plans, must be valid. So let's continue for new for new let me, in, let me interrupt you for a second there. And one of the things that's important for engineers and architects to be aware of is we have instructional guides on our website and links to those companies. There's also some free things that you can do. It requires a little bit more thought and care, but not every digital seal is requires that you pay someone for it. So please check on our website if you haven't already, and it will help you um, with that. And sorry to interrupt, Laura. I just want to make sure that please. to plug that <laughs> to plug our website. For, <laughs> for any topic that I'm that I'm talking about, you feel or when you you feel that you need to add something, please do. So let's continue for for a new construction or or addition. The energy conservation for must be presented and and completed. I, I have some questions that um, what is an energy conservation form? So um, most of the engineer or architect know and work with the energy conservation uh, form. This is an example. This is a, a residential form 405, the Florida Energy Efficiency Code for Building Construction. So uh, make sure that the information in the energy form 
matches with the uh, with the plants. This is a typical comment we have uh, during during plan review. Make sure, for instance, on the um, energy form that the address is the, uh, the the right address for the permit. Also, if it's a single family, is uh, how many stories, how many bedrooms, uh, the the area, the exact area on the energy form must match with the area provided on plans. Also, we verify the windows factor, like the U factor, like the glassing factor. And we verify that the wall types, the insulation value, values are match, matching with the, with the plants. We have on the photo on the right, we have an example of the typical wall section with the R value for the walls and ceiling. We, we verify that those values uh, match with the information provided on the energy form. Also, the information for the cooling system. The information provided for the cooling system must match with the, with, um, with the schedule provided for those AC units in mechanical sheets. Also, um, the, for example, for a new AC installation, a, a heating and cooling load calculation must be provided. That's, that's the way we know if the unit that is going to be installed, uh, it has the, the, the right capacity for the space that is serving. This um, uh, heating and cooling loads is very important for us and is typical comments. Uh, all mechanical systems must be elevated at or above the design floor elevation. And this is the elevation required by the section 1612 of the Florida Building Code, plus free board for new, for new constructions. Um, another thing, another typical comments is that all um, the notice of acceptance NOA for new condensing unit stands. That's a typical comment. Sometimes um, the engineer or the architect um, failed to provide a complete set of the NOA for the condensing unit stand. So uh, the NOA cannot be expired. That happens in typical comment too. The NOA cannot be expired and must be highlighted the stand value selected. Make sure that the, in, uh, the NOA submitted matches the information on plans. So sometimes we have as a typical detail on mechanical sheets, the condensing unit stands with a reference NOA number that does not match with the separate set provided for the NOA. So in this photo, this is an example of the NOA which shows the condensing unit tied down to the ground also. We have a um, typical example of the condensing unit NOA, the stands for the NOA. So let's keep going. So more comments during plan review. The equipment mounting installation details. Make sure, for instance, when you are installing a new AC unit that the, the installation Detail is also uh, on plants. It's a vertical AC unit, it's a, it's a one mountain AC unit, or it's a hanging from the ceiling. That uh, tied down information detail must be provided on plants. Also, the exhaust system information. We have in the photo on the right as an example of the exhaust fan. So, make sure when you added a new exhaust fan or new exhaust system, the exhaust uh, dot size, the route, material, and termination, or as instance, if you are installing a dryer, or exhaust fan, or kitchen hood, that information must, must be provided on plan. In the photo on the right, we see this example that uh, you have two options. So it could be ducted to, to, through the wall, or could be, could be ducted through the roof. That information must be uh, must be shown on plan. Exactly, it's going to be ducted to the wall or to the roof, cannot be both. We have another example. Uh, this is a um, type one kitchen exhaust hood showing on, on this area. And as per code, the exhaust termination for this hood, for example, for this exhaust fan, cannot be uh, located less than 10, 10 feet away from upper 
openings into the building. We see open windows into the building or no, cannot be less than three feet away from a fixed panel or fixed window. And of course, it has to be located 10 feet away from any intake. In this picture, it is allowed to be located less than uh, 10 feet from the intake, as long as it's located at least three feet above of the air intake. So uh, make up air, make up air for uh, kitchen hoods or dryer when, when required. That's another typical comments during, during plan review. We have in this photo an example of a single family home kitchen hood exhausting to the outdoor and makeup air, makeup air provider. So as per Florida building code, when the kitchen hood exhausts more than 400 CFM, makeup air must, must be provided. We have an exception on the Florida residential code that if the exhaust capacity could be up to 800 CFMs without the, the need for makeup air, only if there is not any gravity space within the, any gravity banks within the conditional space. So we also have another typical comment, the dots penetrating a shaft must comply with the Florida Building Code Mechanical Section 607.5.5. And we will talk about these sections later. Also, uh, the fire rate penetration of floor ceiling assembly must be provided with fire damper or fire small damper with access panel. Another typical, um, typical comment we have is the request for the HVAC design requires table. It is required as per Chapter A of Miami Dade County. Sometimes I have the question, the questions, uh, what is that? So we decided to include in this presentation a typical example of the HVAC design, uh, design requires table, where the, the, the engineer or architect must check yes or no, according to the, to the permit processing, yes or no for dot small detector, for fire dampers, small dampers, fire rate enclosure, it's typical we see sometimes during during plan review that the engineer includes in plans include a fire damper or fire small damper or the fire rated uh, ceiling assemblies is rated, but then we see down the back table check as no. So that information must be coordinated. Let's continue. Um, let's talk a little bit about the requesting inspection online and the inspection route. We have um, we have uh, calls all 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 the time asking for the time frame of the of the inspection, so and how to look for inspection online or how to request inspection online. So to request an inspection online, uh, one more time we go to top links and we go to inspections or directly onto Citizen Cell Service, CSS, to search for the permit. So when we click on inspections, we have a new window show on the right for the inspections. And before you request on an inspection, make sure that you follow the job site requirement showing here which is uh, before follow, before requesting an inspection, make sure that the approved job copy of the plans and documents are on site. Make sure you have the permit card, the recorded notice or commencement. The properly address must be properly posted and visible from the street. The job to be inspected must be accessible and OSHA approved ladder must be available if needed. So, um, when we go, to, we scroll down inspection, you see the inspection route. Keep in mind that the inspectors route are being reordered during the hours of 7 a.m. to 5.15 a.m. So if you check online for your permit at 8 a.m. and you see you are number one, and you check at 20 minutes later and suddenly you are number five or number six, it's because you should not be checking for your inspection order uh, prior A15. At that time, as we mentioned, from 7 a.m. to A15 a.m., 
the inspection are still working on the routing, the inspections. So the inspection route will show the order of the, the inspection and the inspector name will show on this uh, screen, you see the inspection route. Better in this, in this photo, you just enter your permit number, you click on building and check on find inspections. You will have this new window and you will see the order of the inspection for the day, the inspector name. And for example, in this example, if you see that inspection number one is um, green, means that that inspection is, is completed and your inspection is next. So now I would like to talk about the most common comments we, we, um, we have during inspection. So when the inspection goes uh, to per perform an inspection, usually the inspection will fail it for the comments, for this, uh, these comments. And the first one, uh, more typical, not ready for the inspection. Uh, usually it's because the contractor is not on site the approved plans are not are not available or there is no access to the job site. Another typical comments during our inspection is the supported documents available. The supported documents must be available on site. For example, if you are um, if you apply for an AC unit change out, make sure that the AC change out form are on site. The Tie, tie downs uh, for the, um, the unit installs, the HRI certificate, all that information must be on site at the time of the inspection. And another question I have, uh, sometimes I have questions for the um, contractor, what exactly is an air conditioning change out data? So I decided to add a photo of uh, AC unit change out form, as you see, uh, what we request on this form is the information for the existing unit shows on the left and the information for the new unit. So if we see, for example, during the permit intake process, if the, the, the person processes the permit check and for the existing unit says uh, the system capacity two tons, for example, and for the new, uh, new uh, equipment is four tons, that is not an exact replacement and uh, the payment take we fail the permit. So exact change out for us, I mean, means that the equipment to be replaced, the, the capacity must be the same as the duty installed, the same uh, equipment uh, system. For instance, if you have a window or wall unit and you are replacing by a mini split, that's not an exact replacement. Another thing uh, in this change shell form, uh, when you have time, read this carefully because all the, the information you need to you need to provide at the time of inspection is posted on this form. Also, make sure when you uh, check, for instance, you check yes, we have the checklist yes or no. If you check yes for a new roof curb or curb adapter or for a new stand, if yes. You see here is yes, you must call for roofing in progress inspection. Also, if you check yes for a new equipment being moved or relocated, or you check yes for a new dog wall being installed, that is not an exact replacement. And in this case, um, there is a, you need to submit the plans for review. I mean, if you submit, uh, if you are replacing the, the condensing unit stand, then you will need to submit the NOA for the condensing unit stand for review uh, by it, for um, to to be reviewed for 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 our team. So um, we talk about it uh, about this for the AC unit installation uh, must be done as per code, uh, per, per code and as for the manufacturing installation instructions. So make sure uh, for um, Make sure that uh, the tie down details are, uh, are installed as per, as per manufacturer, that the unit in, install uh, is a match with the information provided with the AC, AC data change out form. Um, and of course, that the installation is done as per code. Another typical comment during inspection is the energy conservation form. 
that must be on site during rough inspection. We talk about uh, the energy conservation form during, during plan review, and uh, it's also requested during inspection. And why is that? Sometimes we may overlook during, during, during plan review uh, to make sure that the information provided on plans matches with the information pro provided on the energy form. So uh, the field, we check that uh, the information for the system, the HVAC system in place uh, matches with the information provided in the energy form and on, on, on mechanical plants on the HVAC and the equipment um, schedule. Also, we check, we see here the dots in information. Uh, we check that the insulation provided in the energy form matches with the dot word installed at the R value for those dots. Another typical comment is uh, the work performed must match approved plans. So we, we understand that um, some, sometimes during the, in the field, during the, the installation of the HVAC system, there are certain limitations because of the space and um, the work cannot be done exactly as per plans. So in that case, we request a revision two plans to show exactly uh, what is the dump, the, that the dog, that will be done uh, matches with the information on plans. Sometimes we, we request, depending as of how big are the changes on the field compared with the approved plans, the revision two plans, um, uh, sometimes we are selected for the revision to be done for final inspection. Sometimes it's during the rough, the revision to plans must be done prior to rough the next rough inspection. And the reason why is one because once we pass the rough inspections, there is no way for us uh, during final inspection to verify that the that the job that the job done matches exactly with the revised plans. Um, Another typical comment is uh, the appliances must be accessible for inspections. So the appliances must be accessible for inspections, um, not uh, for, must be accessible not only for service and repair, for, but also for re replacement without, without uh, dismantling any permanent, permanent construction uh, around the AC unit. That's a typical comment we see during inspections, that the access panels is not big enough, not only for maintenance uh, and service the equipment, but also to replace the, the, the appliances. And uh, another comment is the dog wall size. I mentioned before that the wall size, the routes and insulation, not as per plan. And we have an example here for the dog work. Um, we have this is we see this comments uh, typical on um, on the field that the plants call or also the energy form form call for R6 uh, value insulation for the dog work, but uh, the um, the dog work installed is an R4. In this case, a revision to plants and the energy energy form is required. More common, uh, typical common comments during inspections. We talk about it during, during, during plan review is the exhaust termination. We have this example here on the right for this is an intake lure and exhaust lure. The minimum distance between the intake and the exhaust lure must be 10 feet. Um, 10 feet uh, and, uh, also the intake, the exhaust lure has to be minimum 10 feet from operable, operable windows in through the building. Uh, yes, in, if it's environmental air, for example, the air is environmental when it comes from the exhaust fan, when it comes from the, from the dryer or for uh, domestic kitchen hood. In that case, the exhaust, um, the exhaust termination must be located at least three feet from the from any intake into the into the building. Another typical comment is that the dots, I'm sorry, the dog wall cannot be in contact with the foam insulation. We have a photo, typical photo on the right. 
it, uh, the phone insulation cannot be in contact with the dog work, the dog, I mean, the dog work, because it will void the listed, the listing of, of the, of the dog work, and it will cause, will cause damage with time. Another typical comment is that dogs penetrating at a shaft that must comply with the section, the Florida Building Code Mechanical Section 607.5.5. And we have a typical examples in this photo. Uh, for instance, if um, the, the job includes the, includes, uh, the installation of the exhaust fan in, the bath, in a bathroom on a uh, residential building, the exhaust fan dot must be connected to um, existing a rated shaft. That connection must be must be protected with either five more damper or with a boot inside of the, the shaft, minimum 22 inches high into the shaft, with an exhaust fan running continuously on the roof. Sometimes I want to I want um, to put an example. We have a um, typical permit small uh, interior units renovation with uh, the engineer or the design professional stays on the first page, no mechanical work. But when we go to architectural sheets, we see that the, the, the scope of work includes the installation of the new washer and dryer or includes the installation of the exhaust fan for the bathroom. In that case, there is mechanical work and that work must be shown on plans and must be, of course, in compliance with the with the Florida Building Code Mechanica. Now, a typical um, common comments is to verify the makeup air for the dryers or kitchen hoods. The mechanical codes require for dryers, dryers exhausting more than 200 CFMs that makeup air must be, must be provided. Also for the kitchen hoods, I mentioned before, exhausting more than 400 CFMs, makeup air must be provided. As an example, we have in the photo in the corner, we have a typical uh, laundry closet. Typically, the uh, doors are full lower. In this case, it's half lower. Um, could be half lower, could be full lower, but actually the code requires that for a laundry room, if the dryer exhausts more than 200 CFNs, makeup air must be must be provided. Minimum uh, 100 square inches per dryer. In this, this case, we have only one dryer, but if it's, um, if it's a commercial laundry room in a building, in a, in a commercial building, the, the require for the makeup air 100 square inch minimum must be per, per dryer. So uh, another typical comment is uh, that the inspection must be ready for final inspections. And um, by that we mean for mechanical final inspection, the mechanical system must be in place and probably, probably connected. For example, if when you call for final, make sure that uh, of course the work, the mechanical work is completed and the, um, the door for the AC unit closet is installed. If you have a, a washer and dryer, the dryer is properly, properly connected. All the grills must be properly installed, including the exhaust fan grill. And that's a typical, typical common comments that we have during inspections. And another comment is uh, when you call for TCO, you must be ready for the TCO inspection. And for that, we mean that the mechanical permit related with the TCO must be final, or at least have partial final with no life safety pending issue. For example, if the scope of work uh, includes the installation of fire damper or fire small damper, those damper must be installed. If there is a um, smoke control in place for the, uh, for the building, the smoke control system must be tested and must be approved prior to call for TCO. Uh, if you have installed an AC unit with a capacity more than 2,000 CFM, then the smoke, smoke detector must be tested 
a prior that prior calling for TCO. So um, one more time, you need to when you call for TCO, the final mechanical the mechanical premium must be final or at least partial final with no life safety issues pending. Okay, before the end of the presentation, we are, wanted to add a note from the planning department, which is the exterior mechanical equipment, inclusive of roof mounted equipment, is regulated by the city's planning department. Permits for exterior elements must also comply with the city's land development regulation, which, which can be found online at www.municode.com. So, for example, for for mechanical for the installation of mechanical roof on the roof, they uh, the planning the planning department requires that uh, that installation that equipment cannot be visible from the street. The same, if you are installing a condensing unit on the ground, has to be that installation has to be minimum five feet away from the property line, and a maximum height of uh, five feet. So with that note from the planning department, uh, this is the end of our presentation. If you have any questions for me, please, uh, now's the time. You can raise your hands to ask questions. Um, one of the things to make sure with the planning um, issues is, and, and I, I like to, you know, kind of make fun, poke fun when I talk about this. The new air conditioners, um, just even with the same size tonnage AC, the new air conditioners for efficiency um, sake are shaped more like uh, tall and thin. The older air conditioners are kind of lower and closer to the ground. So a lot of times with the newer air conditioners, even when you're looking at the same tonnage, if um, if it the equipment gets a lot taller, and by a lot taller we're talking something where it's five to ten percent more than what it the dimensions are five to ten percent more of what they are normally. You're now looking at something that could maybe po possibly not work on the same size equipment or with the same anchorage that it had before. And so it's something to keep in mind. I like to say that the new ACs are a little uh, Tom Mooney shaped, whereas the old ACs are a little more Ana Salguero shaped. So um, <laughs> some of them are taller and, and, and much narrower. And because of this, they, um, they can tip easier than the older ACs. And so it's something that we don't normally get into that that level of detail on an exact replacement. But when you are getting something that's that where the shape changes drastically, it is worth looking into if especially if you're mounting it up on the roof, because the last thing you want is your air conditioner to go flying away um, during a during a wind event. And so it's something to kind of keep in mind. Are there any other Anyone else have a question, comment? You can raise your hand if you haven't done this in the past. Up at the top, um, near the three dots, there's like a little hand raising thing. And so you can raise your hand uh, in order to ask questions or you can um, type the questions in the comment box and Laura can see them. Well, it seems like there's nothing, no questions being asked. Questions are all okay. Everyone, everyone understood everything on this. If anyone has, um, would like, or thinks of a question later, you can always uh, email Laura. Notice I throw you under the bus, Laura. I don't, I don't, I don't put it on myself. Of course, I'm just of course. My, my email um, address is posted on the top of the presentation. It's also posted on on the website. So feel free to send me an email. If you have, yeah. you think of any questions that you don't think at this time, uh, please send me an email. And it's it's really um, important that we explain the the simplicity in, in pulling these permits and doing it the right way. And I think with the series, we're going to get into uh, other permit types and how to pull those. And I thank you all for attending today. And I guess we'll be ending early. And so that gives you all um, a little time off. But thank you all for coming. We appreciate 
the fact that you um, come to the city of Miami Beach. We appreciate the fact that you pull permits with us and we are very grateful that we are able to assist you and we are willing to assist you with anything you need um, and any questions you need answered. And I was teasing about, you know, just emailing Laura and not me. Uh, email me, I'll just forward it to Laura. Uh, no, but if you have any questions on mechanical equipment, make sure that you look at it. Um, if you haven't been to our website recently, look at our website. There's always, we try to keep uh, the information as updated as possible and we will be having uh, links to this um, presentation if anyone missed part of it or wants to replay something. And thank you again. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Laura, thank you.